This lecture is on range and null space of a linear transformation. I first define the terms range and null space of a linear transformation and prove two basic theorems in this video. Let's begin with the definitions of range and null space. Let me now first define the range of a linear transformation. Let's consider two vector spaces V and W which are defined over the same field F. Define a linear transformation T from the vector space V to the vector space W. Then the range of the linear transformation T is denoted by R of T and it is defined as the set of all images which are defined in W for every element x belonging to V. Thus, every element of R of t is of the form t of an element of V and t of x belongs to W. As R of t contains the set of all images defined in W, we conclude that R of t is always a subset of the codomain W. Let's do a theorem based on the range of a linear transformation. The statement of the theorem reads, let V and W be vector spaces, T from V to W be a linear transformation, then the range of the linear transformation is a subspace of W. So what we are given here is that T which is from V to W is a linear transformation and so by the definition of linear transformation, t of cx plus y equal to c times t of x plus t of y for c belonging to f, the field f, and x and y belonging to the domain v. We need to prove now that r of t is a subspace of w. So what all we require to prove and for this is number one, r of t is basically a subset of w. Number two, the additive identity zero belongs to the range of t. And for C belonging to F and two elements U1, U2 belonging to R of T, we need to show that C U1 plus U2 also belongs to R of T. So if we prove these three conditions, then we would have proved that R of T is a subspace of W. So let's begin with the proof. We first have to show that R of T is a subset of W. So by definition of R of T, as we saw in our previous slide, it contains the set of all images of the form t of x for x being belonging to v and since r of t contains elements of w clearly r of t is a subset of w thus proving the first condition let's prove the second one in our next slide so let's now prove the second condition that is to show that zero belongs to r of t now we are aware that V is a vector space and so the additive identity 0 is surely an element of V. And as 0 belongs to V, T of 0 will belong to R of T by the definition of R of T. But by a property of linear transformation, T of 0 is equal to 0 and thus we can conclude that 0 belongs to R of T. And that proves the second condition. To prove the third condition, we assume C to be an element of the field F, U1 and U2 to be two elements of R of T and then we need to show that C U1 plus U2 is also an element of R of T. So what I mean by saying U1 and U2 are elements of R of T is that U1 and U2 could be written of the form T of an element of V by the definition of R of T. So I choose u1 to be equal to t of x where x belongs to v and u2 to be t of y where y belongs to v. Thus u1, u2 belonging to R of t implies u1 equal to t of x, u2 equal to t of y for x and y belonging to v. Now let us consider c u1 plus u2. So we shall rewrite by substituting for u1 and u2 as c into t of x plus t of y. We have taken from 2 here. C into T of X can be written as T of CX because T is given to be linear and the second term is added as T of Y. So now again, because T is linear, it could be combined and written as T of CX plus Y, which is shown in my next slide.
So we now write C U1 plus U2 of the form T of Cx plus Y. And C belonging to F, X and Y belonging to V will definitely conclude that Cx plus Y belongs to V. Please note that V is a vector space and so V is closed with respect to addition and scalar multiplication. So Cx will belong to V and Cx plus Y will also belong to V. So this sum again since it's an element of V as Cx plus Y belongs to V, T of an element of V will certainly belong to R of T. So Cu1 plus U2 written of the form T of Cx plus Y which is read as T of an element of V will be an element of R of T thus proving that for C belonging to F U1 and U2 belonging to R of T C U1 plus U2 also belongs to R of T so thus that proves the third condition all the three conditions being proved now we can now conclude that R of T is not just a subset but it is a subspace of the codomain W Let's move to the next definition called null space in our next slide. I now define the null space of a linear transformation. Once again, we assume two vector spaces V and W defined over the same field. We define a linear transformation T from V to W. Then the null space of T or the kernel also called as kernel of T is denoted by N of T and is defined as those elements of the domain V which satisfies the condition that T of X equal to 0. In other words, N of T contains those elements of V which are mapped to the 0 element of W. As it contains the elements of V satisfying the condition, we conclude N of T is a subset of V. Let us now prove another theorem based on null space. The statement of the theorem reads, let V and W be vector spaces and T from V to W be a linear transformation, then N of T is a subspace of V. So what are we given? Once again, let's quickly revise. T is linear. So T of Cx plus Y equal to C times T of X plus T of Y. We call it equation 1. We need to now prove that the null space is a subspace of V. So what are the criteria that we need to prove in order to show it's a subspace? We have three of them. We have listed it out here. First, we shall show that it's a subset of V. N of T is a subset of V. Then show that the additive identity is an element of N of T. Then for any element C belonging to the field and U1, U2 belonging to N of T, we shall prove that C U1 plus U2 is also a member of N of T. So if we show the three conditions are satisfied, that would prove that N of T is a subspace of the domain V. Let's begin the proof. The first condition to show that N of T is a subset of V. Recall the definition of N of T which we studied in the previous slide. N of T contains those elements of V which are mapped to the zero element of W. So since it contains only those elements of V satisfying the condition, it is evident that N of T would be a subset of V. And hence the first criteria or the first condition is satisfied. Let's prove the other two conditions in the following slide. Before moving to the next condition, let us recall what N of T is. It reads the set of all elements of V which are mapped to the zero element of W. Keeping it in mind, let's move ahead with our next condition where we need to prove that zero belongs to N of T. By a property of linear transformations, we have T of 0 equal to 0, where the left hand side 0 is an element of V and right hand side 0 is an element of W. Thus, T of 0 equal to 0 satisfies the condition T of X equal to 0. So, when we compare, we get X equal to 0 and that means 0 is an element of N of T from the basic definition which proves the second condition. 
in order to prove the third one we assume a scalar c in the field f take two elements u1 and u2 to be elements of n of t and we need to prove that c u1 plus u2 belongs to n of t let us quickly understand what we mean by saying that u1 and u2 are two elements of n of t when u1 and u2 are elements of n of t that means u1 and u2 satisfy this condition which means that t of u1 will be 0 and t of u2 will be 0 which is shown in equation number 2 so u1 and u2 belonging to n of t will directly imply t of u1 is 0 and t of u2 equal to 0 what we need to show now is c u1 plus u2 belongs to n of t so when will c u1 plus u2 be a element of n of t only when it satisfies this condition and thus we need to show that t of c u1 plus u2 is equal to 0 in order to prove that c u1 plus u2 belongs to n of t so that is our aim now so let us consider t of c u1 plus u2 we are given t is linear so rewrite it as c times t of u1 plus t of u2 but using the second condition as both t of u1 and t of u2 take the value 0 we get t of c u1 plus u2 equal to c into 0 plus 0 which is 0 let's continue in our next slide so we thus have t of c u1 plus u2 is equal to c into 0 plus 0 which is equal to 0 and c u1 plus u2 is satisfying this condition t of x equal to 0 and thus is an element of n of t thus what have we proved now for c belonging to f u1 u2 belonging to n of t c u1 plus u2 also belongs to n of t so thus three conditions being proved we can conclude now that n of t is not just a subset of v but it is a subspace of v thus proving theorem 2 thus in this short video we have not just given the definitions of range and sub null space but also two basic theorems relating to them which is of great importance hope you have benefited from these thank you meet you in my next video